my name is JC. Welcome to Urban Knife Guy, where we explore the urban lifestyle and jungle survival. A very happy new year to you. And since this is the new year, I thought I'll add a new dimension to the video and just say hi to you for the very first time. So hi. And being the new year, I thought I'll share with you my urban apartment bug out bag, the 2024 edition. Because last year during this time, I shared with you my bug out bag and got tons of comments and suggestions. So thank you everyone who gave ideas. I've incorporated a lot of the ideas into the current kit. And I think it's significant enough to share with you now because it's about 30% different. Now, bear in mind, I am in Southeast Asia. So the climate is hot, humid and wet. All throughout the year, it doesn't get very cold. I'm living in a condominium, so I have to bear that in mind. And basically, all the things that really pertain to me, uh, that's significant and will impact bugging out, that's what I've really incorporated into this kit. So I'm going to share with you my kit, and then I'll come back and I'll give you some of my final thoughts. So let's get started. So here's the pack. It is different from the one I had last year. Now, the one I had last year had an additional pouch and uh, had many compartments as well. Now, the problem was with that was the design. When you fill it up and you carry it, it would pull the weight down. It doesn't stay straight and it kind of just hangs down and that's really bad for your shoulders and your back and makes it difficult to travel for long distances. So this particular pack is much better. As you can see, a lot of the weight is distributed higher, which means it's closer to your back when you strap it. There's also a chest strap, which I always like. My bushcraft pack has that as well, and, and that's really useful to really dissipate the heavy weight. Now, the build weight or size of this particular bag is 80 liters, but I honestly do not think so. It's closer to 50, maybe 55, and I don't even use that up. Now, I do like to get a bigger pack that just allows me to put more things in. And I also don't fill it to the brim because the idea is you might need to collect things and put things along the way if needed. So personally, I would get a slightly bigger pack and not fill it up fully, then get a smaller pack. So just to give you an idea of how it looks like, that's the thickness, straps, lots of compartments, uh, padding as well. And the other side is almost about the same. What I like about this also is the side straps, which keeps everything tight as you need it, but can expand as needed. So again, the whole idea is to keep everything as close and as tight uh, to your body as possible. Now the weight uh, filled up currently is about 12 kilograms, which is as heavy as I want to go to be able to strap this on my back and move with any decent speed or mobility. If you take 20 kilograms, it's going to be really tough. You're going to tie out faster as well. So this is the max weight I'll go. And if there's really a need to ditch weight along the way, I might have to sacrifice some things as I go. But this is basically the bag itself. And let's start out with the front over here as I did the last time and uh, what this is is an add-on pouch it goes onto the backpack strap and I have it on my right side and there's a reason for that now I'll share that later on but basically easy access for critical items in this case uh, a headlamp which I have over here and I also have a folder and this is the Leatherman Crater now unfortunately this knife is discontinued but I think this is a great folder uh, because it's a locking knife, it's got a liner lock, it's got a nice just sub 3 inch uh, blade but it's got some basic tools in the form of a flathead screwdriver and a Phillips head screwdriver. Now I'm very disappointed that they actually discontinued this. Now I have only one of these, I got this probably about 15 years ago. And then I lost it for a while and then I found it again. So I thought this would be great for the bug out bag because I do not want to EDC and just use it every day. But I would love to have this as kind of my prep knife in my uh, bug out bag. So this goes in here, there's a separate compartment. And what I would do in a bug out situation, I would transfer this to my pocket if I do not already happen to have an EDC knife with me. If not, it goes here for easy access and only two items. Again, I do not like to overfill compartments. The idea is to try to just get them uh, accessible and you also do not want to be rummaging things uh, if you need something in a rush and you do not want to open up a pouch and have everything spill out all over the place. That's not good as well. 
Let's have a look at the front pouch over here. Zip it. Now this is uh, basically just a decorative strap, so it doesn't do anything. Maybe I might change to a real carabiner in time because this can't take any loads. Now over here I have a compass. So this is a kind of a base compass with a mirror. You can use it, of course, as a compass. You can use it to sight, get an azimuth, get your bearings. And of course, with the mirror, you can use it as a signal mirror and also to check for wounds uh, if you happen to hurt yourself and you can't really see it directly. And I also just have two more different items. I've got some Salem sticks, light sticks. Again, easy access if I need to break one just to get uh, some light going. And then I've got two sets of uh, paracord over here. Now, one of the biggest changes or evolutions I have for this pack is expanding on the first aid capabilities. And that's what I have in this part over here. All right, let's just start with this section here first. So I've got an FAD. In fact, I've got two FADs. So for this eight dressings, one here and one here. I've also got a face mask. N95 and uh, behind here. So this is hermostatic granules and uh, this is really to stop blood clots, sorry, serious blood clots to stop them fast. So I got this pack actually off Amazon. They are not uh, inexpensive, uh, but then for treating you know, a wound which could potentially be life-threatening, a deep gash that's bleeding that can't stop bleeding, you want something like that. Got some hand sanitizer here which uh, can be used for multiple purposes of course to sanitize your hands especially if you are trying to treat a wound you can also use this uh, as fuel to start a fire if needed so many uses for this and it's just nice to have a handy bottle over here and then i have a first aid kit here and changed some of things inside as well shared my first aid kits uh, in the past uh, but just to give a quick rundown, we've got some electrolytes, uh, fast chews for rehydration. We've got some things for uh, tummy upsets. We've got extra pair of lenses, some antiseptic cream, earplugs, a really small tourniquet. I don't have a combat tourniquet here. Uh, do you think I should get one? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below more electrolytes uh, this the effervescence sort We've got some of those expandable magic towels eye drops super glues for emergency for wounds again and then we've got a whole bunch of uh, different band aids bandages alcohol swabs iodine swabs we've got puri tabs water puri tabs and finally we've got these steri strips here which are really good to hold cuts and wounds together so really a basic first aid kit but expanded upon with uh, more items uh, that i've shown here let's just put this out of the way first and i'll show you the other side here let me just switch this around and we can see what we have over here so we've got lots of kind of paper napkins or serviettes uh, use well as kind of a toiletries or to clean up wounds or to clean up anything I've got some saline solution for flushes flushing eyes flushing wounds if needed got various elastic bandages uh, these are cotton swabs and uh, really are packaged three different bundles and the reason I don't want to package everything together is I do not want them to get contaminated so I've got just bunches and these also make for great tinder if needed and I've got some extra plastic bags of here ziplock bags not necessary for medical reasons but they fit here so this entire front pouch here mainly kind of my first aid kit I should also mention that attached to this cord here uh, which has a kind of a release buckle I do have a mini flashlight here and this is the Olight IR2 and I keep this in my survival tins as well really powerful flashlight but small and again in case I need to you know look for something I don't have my headlamp on and I just need quick access to look for things in the backpack and it's really dark then I know I have a flashlight here and this also acts as a spare this is the part of the pack where I keep some tools 
In my previous pack, I had a separate bag which was strapped via Molly system to the bottom of the pack. Uh, that came with the pack, but I think this system is better. Many travel bags, just like this one, have separate compartments to put dirty shoes. And this is exactly what it is. It's a shoe compartment. So it's isolated and you can access it from the outside, which is good. So let's open this up. And basically I have only three items inside. I've got a pair of gloves. Uh, these have the knuckle protectors as well. And we've got the kind of leather padding on the inside. Uh, this allows me to use devices, which is good, allows you to touch screen. So I want easy access for my gloves. And then we come to something I shared last time, which a lot of people liked, and this is a ladder. So this is a very heavy duty nylon ladder. In fact, I bought two and I connected them together. And the whole idea is that you can connect this to some kind of a railing system, especially in a condominium. You might need to access a floor that just happens to be barricaded or blocked and you want to be able to get down. So that's what you could use this for. Or sometimes you might find another building where you need to get access to. You manage to climb up, but you want a way to get down easily. And that's where the rope ladder can come in as well. And finally, I have a tool. In this case, I now have a wrecking bar. And this is by Stanley. It's a really good, strong wrecking bar. Previously, I used a hatchet, uh, but I agree with a lot of people what they said in the comments in terms of versatility and uh, getting through doors in an urban environment. While you could use a small hatchet, uh, this would be much more useful. Also, doesn't take up much space uh, and this great handy size, but really, really strong. Now we get to the main compartment of this pack. There's really only one main compartment. There are dividers. And as mentioned, there are also these side straps uh, which keep everything together. So just to open it up, you want to open that up. And several compartments, uh, but let's uh, go through this bit by bit. Let's just start off with what we see. Now you notice a lot of plastic bags, a lot of things, individual bags. This is really a sack in sack system, which I learned as a scout decades ago, and then used in the army. And it just keeps individual items segregated, but at the same time, waterproof. What I have over here is a 3M mask. So this is the top of the range uh, filter mask. Again, in a high-rise building, the most likely scenario, uh, the, the reason to bug out really would be a fire. So again, you want to avoid smoke in inhalation and you want to have uh, eye protection. So I have this to wear over. So this is, comes as a set. This is a Ziploc bag to protect the mask and the filters. So that's right at the top for easy access once again. And then as we get in, we've got some, I would say these are comfort items. If you're going to bug out for a long time, you know, more than 24 hours, this bag is of 48 to 72 hours. So you will want some things. I forego uh, wet food. So I used to keep MREs. I think they are fine, but it's wet food. When I'm on the go, I prefer dry food. And in fact, I remember uh, back in army days and even scout camping days, I would prefer drier food just so that you don't have to go to the toilet so much. And I've got a whole bunch of combination of different protein bars. Uh, and I've got this uh, hard tech biscuit. So it's a military style hard tech biscuit, very dense. So even if you just eat a small quarter, it will fill you up very dry as well. Uh, and then I've got some drinks here, different kinds of, I think, coffee and tea, some ginger drink, and that's really more for morale if needed. So this is just all the food that I'm going to carry for a short bug out period. Uh, again, I didn't want to load myself up with too much uh, heavy food and I did not want to have wet food this time. A little toiletry kit. This is, I would consider luxury uh, and what I did was take a lot of the items that you collect from hotels and these are a lot of things are from Japan that all these things all packed up from a towel to soap to toothbrush and I add in some wet wipes so just you know if you ever get a chance uh, in a bug out situation where you can clean yourself up again great for morale extra change of clothes a full set of clothes uh, top, bottom, underwear, and socks. In a bug out situation, I think this is 
a luxury item but if it doesn't take up too much space and weight i'm all for it and that's why i have one set over here water water bottle uh metal water bottle so that you can actually boil water inside and this one also has a uh, kind of a canteen holder again for boiling water if needed or to heat up food if there's uh, such food available so all this goes into a pouch which can be changed to a belt carry if needed okay let's see what else we have over here let's look at the front pouch over here again love these zipper compartments it allows me to separate items and in this case this is kind of my water purification uh, section or kit so i've got a water bag this is for water collection uh, as needed can take two liters and then inside this pouch over here i've got a sawyer uh, mini filtration system so this allows me to collect water purify it and then store it whether in my bottle or in this plastic water bag now over here i've got some power now in this zip compartment i would keep my passport or other documents i need you know last minute before beginning out just shove that inside uh, but what i also have over here is a power bank and this is a 10,000 mah so pretty big and then i've got the cable card over here you know cable card is basically this card with all kinds of cables and attachments uh, because in an urban scenario i think you could be traveling with people you might meet people different people might have different needs or their different electronics or maybe you lose your phone you find a phone you need to charge it up uh, you want to be able to charge any kind of phone with any kind of hit so that's what i have over here so moving on to this section over here so this is typically the laptop section of uh, this kind of a travel bag uh, but i use it to keep this i've done a review separately on it and this is basically the big blue solar charger so being in this part of the world sun is very bright most of the time and if i need charging up uh, chances are solar power would be the way to go so i have this so it's got all the cables as well and can charge up any devices or phone or uh, flashlights if needed also got a poncho over here uh, this particular poncho also has eyelets and i added in uh, some other things uh, as you can see i've actually kind of uh, pre-set it up as well so that it can be used as a shelter if needed so kind of a dual purpose a one person tiny shelter or a poncho however talking about shelters i also do have a tarp over here and i've got a three meter by three meter tarp with a reflective kind of metallic uh, inner lining and again also set up with the different uh, paracords for easy setup uh, whether it's a frame or a lean to so this is actually pretty heavy i was debating whether to put it in on well, this part of the world it rains a lot as well uh, and if even though you're in an urban environment where there's a lot of buildings and you could you probably find a place to hide i've also got a forest within two kilometers of me and maybe there might be a reason to go in i'm very familiar with that forest or that jungle so i decided i'm going to keep this in and in any case where i really need to ditch weight maybe this is one of the first things uh, that would go all right i've got just maybe three more things to show you and that these are at the sides there are two external pouches but there are also these straps which hold it uh, closed so that things don't fall out so easily on top of that you notice i've also looped uh, the bag of the item i'm keeping inside on the strap so even if it somehow falls out you know it's going to dangle and uh, probably i won't lose it completely so this is a simple waterproof drawstring bag and what i have inside here is my little cook kit so this is an esbit stove or portable stove very popular in this part of the world I've got a rubber band with a lighter, some green uh, wire or twist tie here. And this is just so that it doesn't depress and you lose gas. 
and inside the S-bit stove itself, I've got some solid fuel and I've also got a candle or in a Ziploc bag right over there. So just kind of a little self-contained uh, fire kit or a cook kit maybe, uh, just to make it easy if I need to start a fire and cook. Now we go to the other side of the bag and as you can see there's something else inside in this pouch and this I've actually held it with a carabiner. Now this is not a weight bearing carabiner so again I might change that in future and this is again really snug inside it's not going to come out that easily so that's a good thing because this is kind of my emergency toolkit right over here. Let's open this up and let you have a look inside. So if you follow my channel a lot, you know I've put together a lot of different survival kits, tins, pouches, and this kind of is a combination of different ideas I've worked over the last two years and put together for this particular 2024 urban apartment bug out bag. So this is kind of a self-contained, I guess you call it an emergency toolkit. Now on the outside, inside this mesh area, by the way, this is a Maxpedition micro pouch. Uh, what I have are two ranger bands. I'm not going to take them out, but basically two ranger bands, which are rubber bands, and I've got zip ties over here. And inside, you can see a whole bunch of different tools. All right, let's go through this, uh, maybe from one side to the other, starting from the left. So I've got the Silcox key, which is a four-way wrench. And this is a great addition. Uh, especially for an urban area when you're on the outside and you need to open outside faucets to get water. A lot of times there aren't any taps, uh, so you need one of these to open it up. And that's small, useful, but invaluable tool to have. Got some cordage in the form of paracord. I've also got uh, this Kevlar thread. I've got some thread. Uh, thread it through a needle and this is in a straw which is sealed up that's just put here along with some uh, safety pins and over here we've got a tool this is the Leatherman Piranha there are two versions this is the older version I find this version actually better just one solid chunk of metal so it's got spanners it's got a little pry bar and we've got a driver as well so small flat tool doesn't take up much space but can be useful in a kit like this Got a mini sharpie, uh, just in case you might need to, you know, write anything on, let's say, a wall uh, or some somewhere I need to write something big. And then over here, I've got a little fire kit in terms of uh, stuff that I might need. I've got wax jute, regular jute uh, in different sizes, and I've got a lot of cotton uh, soaked in Vaseline or petroleum jelly. So fire uh, starting capabilities. And I also have a ferro rod, a magnesium ferro rod here again to be able to start a fire. Some emergency cash uh, might be useful. A lot of times emergency situations, you're better off bartering something, but you never know. Got some duct tape. This is folded over a plastic card, so it gets really flat. I think that's about three to four feet over here. And that's it for this side over here. And over here on this side, I've got a pen. So just a small EDC, this is a Zebra expandable pen. This is my survival lighter. As you can see, there's a lot going on. I won't break it down because I've done a video on this. You can check it out in the link in the card above or description below. But basically there's got, you know, this uh, beeswax thread. Uh, which allows you to, is a hemp wick basically, allows you to extend your fire. You've got uh, all sorts of stuff inside. I believe there's another needle here, uh, some matches. Uh, yeah, so just check out the video on how to actually put this together and to see what all the different things are together. I do carry a multi-tool and in this case, uh, my go-to would be the signal. I've talked about this before, why well, I don't think this is the perfect multi-tool for bushcraft which you use on a regular basis. But as a kind of an emergency kit tool, I think this is probably one of the best uh, Leatherman tools they can get. This is the Leatherman signal. I've got a small light here as well. So it's LED light that you just press. Again, if I need to look for something, uh, and it's dark, I can use that. But again, more importantly, my thoughts about this is to put together a self-contained kit so that for whatever reason, let's say I had to ditch my entire pack for whatever reason, I just, I still needed something I could 
take this and just carry this and still have something with me. Or again, in an urban environment, in a disaster situation, you might be bugging out with different people, you might need to divide labor or work and you want to kind of give them something, then I might part with a small kit like that so it's self-contained. Got a signal panel which can double up as a blanket. It's got that reflective side on one side and this orange side uh, which is great for panel signaling. Another signal mirror here but in the form of just this kind of a plastic uh, material but there is a film cover so I just peel that off and you get a mirror which can be used effectively as a signal mirror. Very basic water purification. I've got uh, coffee filters and a plastic bag. And that's basically about it. Uh, that's uh, this emergency pouch. The final item I'd like to show you is in this compartment over here, kind of a secret compartment, where basically a lot of these travel bags have it. Right at the back is zippered. And this is where I keep my fixed blade. That's right. I think it's important to have some kind of a fixed blade. In an urban setting, I do not necessarily want to I guess have it out uh, unless when I need to. So I do have that uh, folder which I showed you earlier. So if I need to, I can access this. And if I need to, because this is a scout carry style sheath, I can strap this to my strap. And that's why I strapped the flashlight or headlamp pouch on my right because this goes on my left. Now I can use my right hand to cross draw it if I need to access it. So there's only a situation where it comes to a point where I really need to have the knife at a really easy to access position and I'm not really worried about uh, people seeing if I do have a weapon or not. But the style of knife that I've chosen for this is a tracker style knife. Now this tracker is by Big Cat Raws and it's really based on the original Russian tracker and I talk about the origins of the Russian tracker as the original knife, you can check it out as well. Uh, but this is a really good uh, version of the tracker. I'm not using the Russian tracker here simply because I use that a lot regularly when I go out in the jungle. So I wanted one just for this bug bag, so I chose this one. Made from D2 steel, very strong, very uh, good. I've tested its capabilities. It can chop, uh, it can carve. So as kind of a all-in-one tool, uh, I think the tracker knife actually has a case for that and if I do want to be in a bug out survival situation then this is the knife I'm happy to carry. I like the nice beefy size as well so again it complements the smaller folder that I have and uh, this just fits in here when I do not need it. It's hidden from view uh, but if I do want to get at it I can easily get at it as well. Thank you so much if you're watching to this point. I know it's been a long video, but I really wanted to show everything in the bag. Just a couple more things. I do have a set of trash bags. These are heavy duty, extra large. They're deep inside, so I didn't see it during the unpacking, but very useful stuff to keep in your bug out bag. I've also got my maps downloaded in my phone and I use all trails actually. And I've downloaded maps within a eight kilometer radius of my place as well as the city center. And I do intend to get physical maps to put in the bag. Just haven't found one just yet. But do let me know your thoughts and if you've got any more ideas uh, for suggestions for the kit. Now, bearing in mind, of course, my environment and the climate and the things that I have mentioned. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like the content in general, please hit that subscribe button. My name is JC. Talk to you soon.